Hello, this is Extreme Darian, and this is part 7 of the uh, rotation tutorial. So, uh, what we're going to be doing in this one is fixing the little areas here where I go off the green screen. What I'm going to do first is create a mask on this layer. So, um, go up here to the pen tool, and the mask tool, if you've never used it before, is, is weird. If you want to make a mask with just straight lines, then just click, click, click click and finally click again and the default is whatever it's is inside that mask is um, the only thing that you'll see for this time I really want a mask with softer um, smoother uh, curvier whatever lines so I'm going to click and hold down the button you can drag off these little tangents and then go to the where you want to go and pull on it and it's hard to see because the white background but if you see here um, it warps and moves and it's kind of weird looking so yeah just make it curve around there that looks okay for over there down here it doesn't matter and all I'm doing is cropping out these edges where there's no uh, green screen if you stop in the middle before your mask is done just click on the last one Go to the pen tool again and you can finish it off. And there. So now this one I'm going to leave as is, but I'm going to create a duplicate. And this one I'm going to go into that mask settings down here. And I'm going to change it from add to subtract. So now if I turn off that bottom layer, you can see that, that um, one, what's inside the mask is all that you'll see. Subtract is what's outside the mask is all that you'll see. So so now this one I'm going to pre-compose, go to layer, pre-compose, move all attributes into new composition. Uh, now it, it acts like it's been rendered. That's what pre-composition does, kind of. So there aren't any effects, there aren't any masks. And if you want to go into that and make changes, just hold down Alt and double click. You can go back in and here's the mat and all the effects again. But now what I'm going to do first is show you the long and uh, the the most difficult way of, of fixing this, but it's also the most versatile. Um, I'm going to create another mask. Uh, I'm going to turn off the checkerboard. And on this one, I'm going to start a new mask and holding down the button again so I get the curvy uh, mask. I'm going to start drawing around. I'm going to change the mask's color too because it's hard to see. That's a little bit better. Um, uh, click on this one again so I can keep going. And uh, just kind of use these curvy warpy lines to uh, draw around um, my hand here. And one useful thing that you might want to do is uh, at the moment if you move one of these uh, tangents the other one will move too and uh, sometimes you want to do that uh, to make adjustments like here I can just do that and that's a little bit better but sometimes you want to break them apart so if you hold down G or just go back here and click on it again you can break it and move it independently if you click on it again with the pen tool active you can put them back together again so, over here, continue my mask up here. I'm not going to do a real thorough um, explanation of uh, rotoscoping here, which is what we're doing, so, but hopefully you'll get the gist. So, over here, and finish it off. I right, want to come down here to masks, and we want to say none so we can see everything and know what we're doing um, and also go in and key the mask shape so it'll put a keyframe there and now we can um, start changing things later on and it will start animating itself so I want to go a little bit forward and if you just click on the mask layer down here then it'll select all the keys and you can move them around 
as opposed to normally where you would click on one and you could just move one around which you want to be able to do too but right now I just want to move them all and another uh, useful feature for this is when it's all selected like this if you go control T you'll get this interesting thing which you'll recognize if you use Photoshop or something and you can um, rotate it and scale it all at once or you can see used it there it goes <laughs> um, and uh, yeah so just want to rotate it around like this and now come in and uh, move this down here since my finger's not in view anymore and you know I'm not going to be too picky here so uh, if you look down here the keyframes are you can see that it's interpolating between the keyframes and uh, it's actually doing a pretty good job at the moment and not much needs to be altered but uh, this will really speed up cutting out things by hand like this because of the interpolation so bring it over here and uh, yeah and uh, once whatever you're uh, cutting out rotoscoping is off the screen go to the very next frame after you're done with the mat and I like to move it off screen so it comes so it's there for as long as you need it then it's off the edge of the picture and it won't mess you up later which it could so now that was the later part now, as you see, I'm not doing this um, linearly. I'm not going to the first frame and starting out and then moving it because that would ruin the advantage of the interpolation. Interpolation, because if I go over here to where it first starts um, and move it to where it needs to be, and if there's already another frame over here um, later on, it's going to interpolate between those two things so it's already close to where it needs to be later on which really speeds up um, the entire process because you don't have to change so much so so be as picky as you want so I'm just going to make a few more minor alterations uh -huh. This is not the world's greatest mask, because I'm not the world's greatest rotoscoper, but I don't know what can you do. Uh, I'm going to say that's good enough, even though it's not very good. But anyway, and just do it again. Um, this would be before the mask is actually needed, so it would go one frame before that, move it off. So it's off the screen, then it comes in, does, does what it needs to do, then it goes off. Now if we go in, go to add again, so that's all that's visible, then we just have the hand separated, and we can turn on our other layer down here, and we've got our hand back. Now this would look a lot better if we come in here and do some alteration to it, like go down here to mask expansion, you can expand or shrink the mask, I just want to shrink it a little bit, and feather it, maybe one pixel so it's a little softer and it's not going to make up for my lousy job of uh, rotoscoping but you know see this little seam here it's just because the mask um, for cropping the original footage wasn't quite right so I'll, I'll hold down alt double click go into this mask and I'll say just expand the mask a little bit by going into the negative range since it's a subtract mask and get back into here and that little scene is done good okay so that is the long way of doing it now uh, I really recommend that you get used to this kind of manual masking um, with an animated mask because it's really useful you'll use it all the time for this footage it's not really necessary to do it all by hand with masks like that so even though you could do all of these fingers um, going off the green screen 
like that, I'm going to show you a shortcut which will work for this footage and might work for your footage. So just have to see. Unfortunately, I'm out of time, so that's for the next segment. <laughs>